Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a TronSmart MK908. It's an Android TV stick or Android mini PC, and it's one of the most powerful ones that we've seen. It's a little bit larger than a USB flash drive, and it's designed so that you can plug one end into a TV using mini HDMI, plug another end into power so that it turns on, and it'll run Android 4.1, letting you play games, surf the web, uh, stream internet video, and do other things. So. Um, Let's take a quick look at what you've got here. It's got an RK3188 uh, ARM Cortex-A9 quad-core processor from Rockchip. It's one of the fastest Cortex-A9 chips around. It has 2 gigs of RAM and 8 gigs of built-in storage. And there's this uh, micro SD card slot here, which you can't see too well in this lighting. But there's a micro SD card slot, which you can use to uh, plug in additional um, uh, storage if you need it. Full-size USB port, uh, 2 mini uh, USB ports, you can use one to plug in a peripheral and there's an, actually an adapter so that you can plug in a full-size USB item to it. And the other one is for power. Um, and then on this side we've got a mini HDMI, So uh, and it comes with a mini HDMI to full-size HDMI cable. So again, you plug one end into the TV, plug the other end into a power source, uh, plug in a keyboard, mouse, other peripherals, and uh, you're good to go. You're running Android on your TV, you can stream uh, video, play games, and do that sort of activity. So let's see what it looks like once it's turned on. Alright, so here we are in front of a TV. We've got the uh, device plugged in and powered up, and I'm using a wireless keyboard and mouse that you can't see too well here because of the lighting, but basically it's a keyboard with a touchpad area built into it, so it's, uh, it works with just a single USB uh, dongle. Um, so let's take a look and see some of the things that you can do here. You can see that we are running Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. We've got support for uh, all of these different Android applications, and the uh, go into the settings, you can see that in the about section it uh, shows Android 4.1. Uh, if we scroll up a little bit here in the display settings you'll notice that it doesn't have a lot of options, it just says wallpaper and font size. There's also an HDMI area where uh, you should be able to change your HDMI. It says that we're at 1920 by uh, 1080 pixels. Um, I haven't really been able to verify that, uh, especially because I'm using a 720p television right now, um, but it does show different uh, options. Uh, and there's a screen zoom option here, which I should take advantage of because some of the content doesn't fit on the screen perfectly. Okay, great. So under HDMI settings, you can tweak some of those options to make sure it plays well with your TV. Once you've done that, you can use it to stream video from online sources, including Netflix. Now I found that sometimes when I just start playing a video, it's a little bit pixelated. Um, but the quality tends to improve if you sort of pause it and rewind it or exit and go back to it. So uh, video quality actually looks pretty good here, and we're streaming over uh, the internet over a Wi-Fi connection. So Netflix is good. Let's go to Google Play Movies. In this case, we're going to watch an episode of Planet Earth. The calf is young, but it can outrun the wolf if only it manages to keep its footing. So streaming video works pretty great. Um, YouTube should also work, other so uh, sources of video if you like. And if you wanted to, you could download additional um, applications from the Google Play Store. So we've got access to the full Play Store. You've got uh, apps, movies, music, and so forth that you can download here. And it downloads and installs, no problem. The web browser works pretty well. So if you want to play games, you could open up an online game site. If you want to surf the web, loads websites pretty quickly. If 
it does take a little getting used to, especially if you're using a keyboard and mouse here, that um, while it feels sort of like you're using a computer instead of a phone or a tablet, it's got a tablet-like user interface. So you tap to zoom, um, you drag to scroll, you can't, um, there's no scroll bars on the side, for instance. Um, what you can do is hit Alt-Tab, though, to bring up your list of recent applications and switch between them. And so let's go ahead and go to the XBMC Media Center application, which is designed for televisions, right? So it looks great. Uh, unfortunately, it's not really optimized, I think, for this particular chipset. So the user interface looks good, but if you go to videos, I'm going to try and stream some videos over my home network from a shared network drive. So instead of having to load all of my TV recordings uh, onto this 8 gigs of storage, I've got a hard drive on another computer that's set up uh, to, uh, to host them, and I'm just going to try and stream them here. Unfortunately, um, I've run into a couple of problems here. So when I try and use an MP4 video encoded as H.264, um, the video tends to look a little... Let's get a little ahead. Did you really think I wouldn't find out that he killed your brother? That you were using me? Me! To what? Draw him out in the open so you could take him down yourself? So the video looks a little bit stilted here. There's some audio and video sync issues. Um, performance is a little bit better if you find a video that is uh, in, in corded, encoded as an AVI or a... Well, it depends on the AVI. Uh, what I have is, are some videos here that are uh, recorded as... This one, yeah, this one is uh, DivX encoding, and I think that's because the software decoder works well enough to handle DivX, but it doesn't and work so well toxic than with H.264. So long story short, um, XBMC is a little bit of a mixed bag, but there are other ways that you can uh, stream content over a home network if that's what you want to do here. So let's go into... ES File Explorer, and the user interface clearly isn't quite as well designed uh, for televisions as something like XBMC. But we can go in here, look for that same episode of Arrow that I recorded recently, pull it up and play it in the MX Video Player, and this time it's going to offer support for hardware decoding, and it should look just fine and have no uh, audio video sync issues. So it works pretty well as a device for basically turning your TV into a media center, uh, letting you run audio and video applications. You can run the TuneIn radio application, for instance, if you wanted to uh, listen to local radio stations or stations from across the world. And um, overall, I'm pretty impressed with the, uh, the performance of this device. It uh, scores well in benchmarks, and you can find more details about how, uh, how it handled in Antutu, uh, Quadrant, CF Bench, and Velamo uh, benchmarks here by going to lilliputing.com for more details. Uh, should be able to handle games and other activities. Now again, it's not a touch screen, so you're going to have to get used to the idea of using a keyboard and a mouse or a remote control if you can find one that works. Um, you should be able to maybe even plug in a uh, gamepad, though, if you wanted to play games, but you'll have to map the buttons to work with those games. So it's, uh, it's kind of an interesting device, and, um, and I've used a lot of Android TV sticks over the last year or so. This is probably the fastest one that I've used. As I mentioned, the benchmarks uh, uh, show a pretty great performance. Um, boots pretty quickly, handles video very nicely, uh, and has good Wi-Fi performance, both down here in my living room right next to the wireless router and all the way up in my third floor office where it's a lot farther from the wireless router. Um, so for $90, I think you get a, a lot of bang for the buck here as an alternative to something like um, uh, a Google TV box, which has a, more sele uh, a smaller selection of applications, or a Roku device. Um, this lets you run anything that's available for Android. Now, there are some things that aren't available for Android. So, in, for instance, Amazon Instant Video, uh, there's an app available for Google TV, there's an app available for Roku, there's not an app available for Android. So, if you wanted to stream video from um, Amazon, uh, you might run into more problems or have to use the web interface, and uh, I've had limited success getting that to work so far. Um, so, you know, some apps aren't going to run, but 
uh, with hundreds of thousands of different applications available for Android. I think it's a, it's a pretty neat platform for turning um, a regular TV into a smart TV without having to buy a whole new TV. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a look at the Transmart MK908 uh, Android TV stick with a Rockchip RK3188 processor.